Hi, I'm Molly Wood, and welcome to The Buzz Report, the show about the tech news that everyone is talking about. This week, the speed read version of all the WWDC news, who won E3 this year, and embarrassing Facebook photo tagging in one easy step. But first, it's the Gadget of the Week. The Gadget of the Week is the Nintendo Wii U, which, maybe it's just me, made me think of sirens. Wii U. It's Nintendo's next generation console, and even though we don't know a lot about the actual console, the controller is where it's really at. It's a 6.2 inch tablet like dealy. It's got a touchscreen and joystick and button controls, a front facing camera, a mic, and then motion control just like the original Wii Motes. It can act like a secondary display, an actual controller, a web browser, a mini version of the game you're playing. It looks basically pretty freaking awesome. Except that minus any other details or real time frame for release other than 2012, generally speaking, it kind of smells like vaporware up in here. I mean, we'll see, but stinky. And now for the news. All right, let's get it over with. Apple held its WWDC keynote this week, which we covered to death here at CNET. If you missed any single second of the two-hour announcement of new OS X features, new iOS 5 features, and the iCloud push and sync service, please visit CNET News, CNET.com, or CNET TV for all the details. In a nutshell, for me, iOS 5 will be just about exactly as awesome as Android when it finally gets around to arriving this fall. OS X Lion will look a lot more like iOS, but for just 30 bucks as an App Store download. And Apple's iCloud will be just about exactly as awesome as Google Docs, but slightly less awesome than Spotify or Lala, and way less awesome than, say, Flickr. Good? Good. Moving on, there was more than just Nintendo at E3 in LA. Kind of this week. Sony announced the Vita, which is not tasty water, but is a successor to the PSP. It was kind of pedestrian overall, but great if you like the PSP. Also, Sony apologized for its big data breach, kind of. They really just apologized for your inability to play its amazing game console for that whole month, but not for letting your credit card data get into the wild or for storing your passwords in clear text on websites around the world. Kind of like, other than that Mrs. Lincoln, how was the play? And Microsoft announced some new cool-looking Kinect games, Bing Search using your voice and Kinect, and some kind of live TV thing involving some partners they didn't name at a date yet to be determined. There's that vaporware smell again. Basically, Nintendo won E3. Again. Speaking of Nintendo, it's time for this week's Hacker News Blue Plate Special. Those go-getter lulsec boys apparently broke into Nintendo's servers but didn't steal any data. Really, Lulsec? First PBS and now Nintendo? Yeah, you're really fighting the good fight there. What are you gonna do next? Pull a kitten's tail? Catch a dolphin in a fishing net? Push a nun down a stairwell? Club a baby seal? Really nice, guys. And finally, Facebook this week silently rolled out facial recognition tagging to all its users. Yes, by default. The feature scans photos you upload and then suggests tags based on who it thinks are in the pictures. Like an easier way to tag pictures. Except it's also a way easier way to be identified in potentially embarrassing photos. And it's not totally clear what happens with public photos. Like what if you're in Egypt or Libya or Syria? Maybe you go to a protest, you get photographed, you get identified, and suddenly you get arrested. Plus, not only did Facebook opt us all in, of course, they didn't even announce they were rolling the feature out or exactly how it works. At this point, I can't tell if Facebook will never learn, if Facebook refuses to learn, or if Facebook is trying to learn us not to use Facebook. Anyway, as always, there's a simple 39-step process in your privacy settings to turn it all off or control who sees your photos. Anybody else interested in a Friendster reunion tour? And that's the Buzz Report for this week, everyone. I'm Molly Wood, and thank you for watching. This isn't the first time that I've come to the stage at an E3 press conference with an elephant in the room. Uh, and of course, I'm referring to the PlayStation Network outage. My friends who are reporters tell me that there's absolutely nothing in the world that makes their editor's day uh, like controversy and bad news. So to all our esteemed members of the press, I say, you're welcome.